What's up guys? It's Alexander. Obviously. Topic of discussion. This is a, a tangent from an interaction, a conversation I had yesterday with a gentleman on Twitter. He was discussing how he had lost over 100 pounds of body fat. So he'd lost a significant amount of weight. 100 pounds is not a small number. He had lost over 100 pounds of fat and he realized that his issues were not that he had emotional issues. It wasn't because he had deep-seated reasons that led, them, led him to eat. His issues were very simple in the fact that he just ate like shit. You know, he ate like an asshole. High sugar, high carb, processed food diet, and he believed that he always had to be eating and that if he was hungry, he had to eat something. And he realized that, you know, fundamentally speaking, the problem was pretty obvious. He needed to change his food choices. Oh, the sun. Whatever. He needed to change his food choices. He needed to change his lifestyle, so he did. And subsequently, he lost the weight. There was not a deep, compelling reason that he had to dig into. It was simply the fact of looking at what his behaviors were, his choices, then fixing it, doing it. So confronting the obvious, the reason why I wanted to bring it up, it was a pretty good, just almost case study example of the fact that as much as we like to, or we like to think that our problems have roots in them. They're very, like I said, ground ground up within us. Sometimes what needs to change is what is right fucking in front of you. If you're lazy, there's probably not a deep emotional reason why you're lazy. You're lazy because you are lazy. Because you make excuses based off of laziness. There's no need to dig any further than that. What's the problem? Well, you don't get out of bed till fucking 10 a.m. Oh, how, well, what do I need to do to overcome that? You need to start waking up fucking earlier. That's about it. You can spend a lot of time going through psychological, I don't want to say bullshit, but psych psychological, you know, let's just, let's say mental masturbation, and you keep going in circles and talking about it, and this is why I can't do this, this is why I can't do that, and, you know, for various reasons, maybe there are things from your childhood that really hold you back, but on a fundamental day-to-day -day basis, what holds you back is some of the choices you make. If you're not willing to change those choices, since that is going to be the thing that changes your life, that improves you, then all the psychological tautology, it doesn't really matter. You're just, you're running yourself in circles over and over and over again. What's the secret to going to the gym? How do you overcome the barriers to that? You just, you show fucking up there one day. You put your shoes on, you drive there, you walk into the building, you pay for the membership, you pony up the money, and then you walk in the treadmill, you try some shit out, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, and you just, you do it. That's it. Your lack of confidence, you were the fat kid in school, uh, fucking boys, girls made fun of you, your body developed early, you got attention you didn't want, you got the shit beat out of you. That's all painful, sad stuff. Like, yeah, I sympathize, but practicality speaking, pragmatically speaking, realistically speaking, nobody gives a flying fuck. You don't even give a flying fuck. You really don't. Because if you really did, that's, that's all the things that you want to get over. If you, know, if you could choose to let all that go, you probably would. If you don't want to let all that go, go then you can keep rerunning it in your head over and over and over again. The same reasons why you're fat, the same reasons why you're broke. It's all the same reasons. Obvious fucking things that you probably shouldn't be doing, and you know you shouldn't be doing them. No one gets fat, broke, out of shape, accidentally. You make choices that have consequences that you ignore for a while, and they come up, and they, you know, metaphorically speaking, bite you in the ass. So what do you need to confront? What's in front of you? What is obvious? Questions you got to ask yourself. Simple questions with simple answers. Doesn't mean it's an easy answer necessarily, but it is simple. I'm talked out. Questions, people? I can't imagine that's a complicated point to understand. sun is bright right now. You got maybe four minutes for this one. Seriously. Like four minutes. You look like white Jesus. Uh, I'm going to take that as a compliment and say thank you. It's a compliment. All right, I feel like figured. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna choose to take it that way anyway.
Sup. No questions? You guys are quiet today. That's a first. Well, I'll keep this rolling for the next... We're at three minutes now. We'll see if anyone else wants to ask anything that's worth answering. Or you can just watch me drive the car. It's apparently watching other people's lives is fucking fascinating. What do you mean by confronting what is most obvious? I'm going to assume you just popped onto the, uh, the periscope. Confronting what's most obvious means addressing the most obvious source of your problems, issues, deficiencies, weaknesses, etc. And confronting what's obvious means you go up to it and you try to solve it or create a solution for it. You know, by the very nature of it being obvious, it should not be a difficult thing to figure out. That's kind of an ironic question of itself. What is obvious? Well, uh, it's kind of in the answer. How do I handle tight hips when trying to squat? Uh, that could be a multitude of problems. That could be, you know, stretch. That could be your squat technique is off. That could be how you're squatting. That could be your setup. That could be your ankles, your hamstrings, your quads, weak hip flexors, weak core, uh, a lot of things. So I would highly suggest hiring a qualified trainer and or trying to, you know, get on YouTube. Uh, Athlean X is a good channel. You know, maybe you can diagnose yourself trying to figure out the issue, but that's not going to be any, it's not usually any one thing. When you got tight hips, that's sort of, just, you know, that's a, that's a manifestation of a lack of activity and conditioning all at the same, all at the same time. Very rarely is, is one singular muscle responsible for something. You know, it's like stretching. It's like, what, what stretch should I do? I have no fucking idea what stretch you should do. You probably need to stretch a lot of things. Tight hips is like tight shoulders. You know, it's, it's a multi-factor issue. Sometimes what, what others see as you most obvious promise invisible to you. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, if you can't see your own shit, like, the, damn, you, that, that's pretty unfortunate. Uh, you know, that said, hopefully you're able to have some level of self-analysis and self-awareness as to know what your, you know, problems are, if you want to say it that way, or what you need to work on. If you have no idea at all, ask somebody that you trust. Ask someone that you think is qualified, that is, you know, an expert or let's just say a well-lived person who can give, you know, concrete, clear advice and prevent an objective opinion. Ask them what you think, what they think you need to work on if you really don't know at all. I, I generally, generally speaking, most people know to some degree what they should work on or at least, at least have an inclination. If you're utterly clueless, well, then go talk to somebody, someone that you trust, or someone that you can trust to give a qualified opinion. Don't just ask a random person. Don't ask your stupid, shitty friends. Your stupid, shitty friends are going to give you stupid, shitty suggestions or just reinforce your bullshit, which is why you should stop being friends with them in the first place. And we're here. All right, guys. Good talk. Talk to you all again.